Hey, this is Rob, and welcome to RBND Reviews. Today I'm going to be re reviewing the um, suspense thriller called Contraband from 1940. It stars Conrad Veidt and Valerie Hobson. And um, well, how I came across this movie was I had never heard of this movie until a few weeks ago, and I'm sure there will be some of you that haven't heard of it either, but I'm glad to be one of the few reviewers that will be uh, re reviewing it for you, and hopefully you'll be able to watch it too. Uh, but I was at the library, and I was going through the aisles looking for a movie to watch, and this movie was sticking out like this on a stand, and I passed by and I saw Conrad Veidt, Contraband, and Leonard Maltin's comment, a superior spy yarn, very much in the Hitchcockian vein. I'm like, oh man, I gotta rent this, so I rented it. Um, this movie is not made by um, Alfred Hitchcock. It was made by um, the writer-director team of Emmerich Pressburger and Michael Powell. Michael Powell made a movie called The Red Shoes, and he also made a movie called Peeping Tom, and um, they made a lot of uh, pictures together in um, England, and um, the back of the, according to the back of the box, it says, Contraband is a comedy thriller in the vein of Hitchcock's 39 Steps and The Lady Vanishes. It's set in England during the early days of World War II. It stars Conrad Veidt and Valerie Hodgson as a Danish captain and his enigmatic passenger who are kidnapped by a cell of Nazi spies operating from a basement in Soho. In a vacuolively Hitchcock in fashion, the plot progresses as a chase uh, that puts the characters in one peculiar setting of surroundings after another. What makes Contraband unique is that most of the story takes place under blackout conditions in which the great city becomes a mysterious dark labyrinth, a metaphor for the English population's general confusion at the start of the war. And uh, the movie was released in the U.S. under the title Blackout, and I saw a quote from Powell's autobiography where he said that if he liked the title Blackout better, and he wished he had thought of it first, and he thinks the U.S. gave this film a better title than what he gave it. Uh, the movie is photographed by Freddie Young, who... Uh, went on to make, um, who went on to photograph Lawrence of Arabia and Dr. Shavago and Ryan's daughter. And um, like I mentioned, um, Conrad Veidt is the, in, it's one of the very rare times he gets to play a leading hero. Most of his career he's often casted as the villains. Uh, for example, an early film that he did was The Cabinet of Dr. Caligari from 1919, where he plays the sleepwalker who does everything that Dr. Caligari sends him to do. He'll go out, he'll send him out to do his evil bidding, sort of. And interestingly, um, I read that he made another movie about the same time called Different from Others, where he might have played the first gay character on screen, who knows, but he's better remembered for playing villains throughout his career. Um, he, uh, he started out at, in German films, but then, of course, World War... Two came along, but before that, the Nazis took over Germany, and he didn't like the Nazis. Um, he didn't like what uh, they believed in, so he first went to Austria, then he went to England, where he made films there, then he went to Hollywood, and he made a great picture called The Man Who Laughs in 1928, where he plays a character who's, again, not the villain, where he um, he's the son of a um, person of a noble person who do, who's an enemy of the king, and so they take um, a, this knife and cut a smile through his face. It served as an inspiration for the Joker um, in the comics. He's better known for, um, for, um, later on for uh, to for playing Nazi characters in films like Casablanca and Above Suspicion and The Nazi Agent, and he's played a character called Jafar in The Thief of Baghdad. So he was often casted as villains, and as of course when World War II break out, he was often casted as the type of people that he hated, the Nazis. But anyway, uh, getting on to uh, Contraband, um, this is, a, a, to me, it's not as good as an Alfred Hitchcock film. I mean, if you look at, I'm gonna, probably going to be comparing this film to Alfred Hitchcock, and I know that might be unfair to some people, and I apologize for that, but I mean, um, it's not as good as a suspense thriller by Alfred Hitchcock, and I think people, including me, will compare it to hit, this film to his films, is because when you think of suspense movies from the 30s and 40s, you think of Alfred Hitchcock. Um, Valerie Hobson um, is Mrs. Sorensen in the film. She's a strong-willed woman, and she refuses to... There's a scene in the beginning of the movie where she refuses to wear a life preserver like everyone else on board. And um, throughout the movie, most of the other women are the exact opposite of her. She's usually calm in a situation. Everyone else is panicking and screaming. She makes a very good comparison to Conrad Veidt's uh, Captain Anderson, who is more strict, and he's more old-fashioned, and he's... Um, and all that, but um, at first I thought the movie was a little bit slow getting started, especially at the beginning when the movie is explaining what's going on and we constantly see stock footage of shifts, but about 18 minutes in, the film finally picks up where Veidt 
uh, goes um, ashore to England to follow two passengers who stole two um, passes and also two small boats. The dark, the dark photography of this movie did a really good job at setting the feeling for of uncertainty with people, you know, running into each other. And the supporting cast in this movie was actually very, very colorful. And um, there's, there are, there's like this um, description on the back says the movie does attempt at mixing some screwball comedy. Uh, with the suspense, like especially with Vite and Hobson's characters, um, there's the best one uh, where they're on a bus and they're arguing in this poor mask, like stuck right in between them, and they're throwing sarcastic comments at each other. And um, while I enjoyed um, listening to their comical dialogue, I thought that's um, somebody like Alfred Hitchcock did a much better job at mixing humor with suspense. I mean, he was able to, um, you know, blend them Here, better. I, I think that the um, Oftentimes, I think the comedy just stops the story for a little bit, for a few minutes before moving on into um, the next suspenseful scene. It, in a way, this movie did kind of reminded me of the Thin Man comedy uh, mysteries, where Nick and Laura Charles are out solving mysteries and they're joking with each other um, as they go along. But then again, um, they do a much better job at blending the two together. Um, I wish the filmmakers had taken more of an advantage of using shadows like in Vite's uh, silent movies um, to create an even more eerie mood. I mean, this uh, shot from the movie where he's behind these gates and Vite's got a gun and they're on his face, that was real nice. I wish they had done more of that, though. But um, overall, it's I think it's a, a decent movie, and if you are familiar with the suspense movies from the 30s and 40s, I do recommend checking it out. I, I think, like I said, I think there's better ones, especially that were made by Alfred Hitchcock, which I thought were much better, but it's nice to see Conrad Veidt play the lead, um, leading man and being a hero, even though I think he was, looked a little bit too old to be a potential love interest to Valerie Hobson's character. But I think it's a decent movie, and I definitely think it is worth checking out. It's on DVD. I think uh, Kino kind of overdid it on the back here, describing how awesome this movie is. I, it's a good movie, but I think an Alfred Hitchcock suspense film is much better. But here, I think, I think this is a good movie, and if you like older movies that are in black and white, check it out. That's my review for the movie Contraband, and uh, leave any comments about this video. Or if you end up seeing this movie, tell me what you thought of it. I greatly appreciate it. And thank you very much for watching.